going to tell you what I think the issues are that are facing this country. I'm going to tell you what the solutions are that go along with those issues. And those are important. Um, I think a homeless person might actually be able to point out the problems facing this country. I think a homeless person might actually be able to point out the solutions that go along with the problems that we have in this country. But you can't be a homeless person and run for President of the United States. I think you have to have a resume. So here's my resume. Um, I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. Uh, I started a one-man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974, and over a 20-year period grew that business to employ over a thousand people in Albuquerque. Yeah. Sold that business in uh, 1999. Nobody lost their job, and they're doing better than ever. It allows me to have a full-time, unpaid job running for president of the United States. <laughs> As governor of New Mexico, I had never run for political office before. Never. Completely outside the political process. I went and I introduced myself to the Republican Party a couple of weeks before I announced. The chairman of the Republican Party of New Mexico said to me, Hey, look, man, I like you. I like what you've got to say. Republicans are going to like what you have to say. So we're, we're completely inclusive. We're going to include you in this process. You can come to all the events, you can take part in all the debates, you can take part in all the gather-ups. But you just need to know, he said, that you will never get elected. That it is not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected governor as a Republican in a state that's two to one Democrat. Well, I got elected. And I'd like to think it was based on what I had to say, which was just to bring a common sense business approach to state government. How about best product, best service, lowest price? How about less government, not more government? And in that context, during my first and second term, I think I distinguished myself for a number of things, but one of them was, I vetoed out 750 bills while I was governor of New Mexico. I had thousands of line item vetoes as governor of New Mexico. That may have been more vetoes than the other 49 governors in the country combined. I just want to put that into context. It prevented billions of dollars worth of spending. It prevented I don't know how many tax increases that were presented. Uh, I can't tell you how many bills I vetoed that had to do with, in my opinion, just adding time and money to our lives, and it wasn't going to make a difference in any of our lives. I think I vetoed six pieces of hate crime legislation. You're going to put the government in charge of determining your thoughts when committing a crime? How about just prosecuting an individual based on their actions, not on thought? But it goes on and on and on with regard to government and what government tries to impose on all of us, when at the core, less government is really better government. So I think I delivered in a really big way. So in this election, I am the libertarian candidate for president. I am going to be one of three candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. This is really, this is really an important distinction. There are other third party candidates, but none of them are going to come close to being on the ballot in all 50 states. So there's a difference between me and the two other guys. And here are the differences. I'm the only candidate that doesn't want to bomb Iran. I'm the only candidate that wants to get out of Afghanistan tomorrow and bring the troops home. I'm the only candidate that genuinely believes in marriage equality from a constitutional standpoint that it is a constitutional guarantee on par with civil rights of the 60s. I want to end the drug war. I believe marijuana should be legalized uh, now. I would have never signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for you and I to be arrested and detained as U.S. citizens. Never. I would have never signed the Patriot Act and I would look to repealing the Patriot Act. I am the only candidate that is promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013. I think the biggest threat to our way of life is the fact that we're borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we spend. It is absolutely unsustainable. 
and what's going to happen as a result of what we're doing, we are going to suffer a monetary collapse. What's a monetary collapse? Very simply, it's when the dollars that we have don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that goes along with borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we're spending. I am the only candidate that wants to abolish the IRS, eliminate income tax, and eliminate corporate tax, and replace all of that with a national consumption tax. In this case, I am advocating the fair tax, which I think really reboots the American economy. It's the answer when it comes to American exports, making our exports 23% more competitive. It's really the answer when it comes to jobs, because in a zero corporate tax rate environment, if the private sector doesn't create tens of millions of jobs, what does it take to create tens of millions of jobs? I am the only candidate that would sign legislation abolishing the Federal Reserve if given the opportunity. We need sound money. And when it comes to the Federal Reserve, this is your and my money that they're printing and then, and then accruing this to debt for you and I, and it's an inside game. They're loaning it out to the banks at 0%. The banks are buying up treasuries in a closed loop, making profits off of you and I in a game that you and I can't play in. It's incredibly unfair. I am the only candidate that would sign legislation uh, to repeal legal tender laws and establish competing currencies, which bottom line, just brings a commodity-based currency. Bottom line, it's about strong U.S. dollar, not weak U.S. dollar. So I think... I, I think we're at the precipice here. We can either decide to address these problems, or we can believe that Santa Claus is going to come this Christmas, or that the Easter Bunny really is going to still deliver the eggs, or that there is going to be a payoff for the tooth underneath the pillow. Look, we can take control of this, but this is mutual sacrifice on the part of all of us. If we don't engage in this process of mutual sacrifice, we're going to find ourselves with nothing. And that is the big opportunity. So the pitch I am making is, is consider, consider the options. And there is an option. And I would ask you to consider it. And I would ask you to consider how do we do any worse than what we've got right now. We have a $16 trillion debt. Eight and a half trillion of that debt is the responsibility of Democrats. Seven and a half trillion of that is the responsibility of Republicans. So I have to tell you, where, where is the difference? Well, it's time for a difference. And I'd like to think I'm offering that up. Uh, I understand that I could open this up to comments, uh, questions, uh, any insults maybe that any of you have. <laughs> You're talking about a consumption tax? Is that a fancy word for sales tax? Or are we talking about value-added taxes too? It's, it's neither, because value-added tax, sales tax, is another tax. This would be the only federal tax. Only federal tax. So I am embracing the fair tax. If you haven't checked it out, check out fairtax.org. What I am advocating is a national consumption tax. I am embracing the fair tax because it is a piece of legislation that's in front of Congress right now. Ninety congressmen and women have signed on to it. They've dotted the I's and crossed the T's on so many of the issues associated with, with, the, with the issues surrounding a national consumption tax. Whether they're right or wrong, it would be terrific to have that national debate over what's the best way to administer uh, a, a national consumption tax. But it, it would be the only federal tax. It would repeal the 16th Amendment. We would abolish the IRS. That is part of the legislative package. All of it has to happen or the legislation doesn't pass. Legislation passes, it allows for six years uh, for the 16th Amendment to be repealed. 16th Amendment being uh, income tax. How much of a spending cut would you propose? $1.4 trillion in the year 2013. Imagine how contentious that document would be. That $1.4 trillion reduction in federal spending is 43%. That's the amount of money right now that we're borrowing and printing. We're printing it and we're technically then borrowing it. Uh, 
1.4 trillion dollars. So 1.4 trillion, let's start off by talking about Medicaid, Medicare, and military spending. 